The National Broadband Network, or the NBN, is the biggest infrastructure project in Australia's history, and it will replace our existing broadband network with a new one. My name's Tony Ayres, and I'm going to tell you about it. Now many of you have broadband already, either with the fixed copper line that comes into your house with a technology called ADSL2+, or perhaps via cable, same cable that, for example, delivers Foxtel, or perhaps a wireless broadband service. And indeed, broadband is a utility, like electricity and like gas. So one of the things you may be wondering is, well, why do we need to talk about it? Well, the NBN, the National Broadband Network, is in the media a lot. As you may have seen, a lot of money is being spent building it. So over these next six videos, I'm going to describe what the project is and why the money is being spent. Okay, so the plan is to build this network and to have it completed by 2021 at a cost currently estimated at $37.4 billion. It will be funded by the Australian government, which means that they'll own it and they'll collect the revenue from it. And the NBN is in fact two projects, if you like. The first one is an infrastructure building project. So the idea is to cover 100% of the population. 93% of the population will get a fibre broadband service. 4% of the population will get a wireless broadband service. 3% of the population will get a satellite broadband service. In the future videos, I'll talk more about how these technology work, technologies work. So that's the first part of the project. The second part of the project is an industry restructure, a broadband industry restructure and one which is needed. And I'll describe why. At the moment, Telstra owns most of Australia's broadband infrastructure because of the way that Telstra was set up 20 years ago. And it's a, a bit like a, an airline industry where Qantas owns all of the aeroplanes and Qantas owns all of the airports. So imagine trying to get airline competition in a situation like that. Well, in the broadband industry, because Telstra owns most of the infrastructure, it's a similar kind of situation, and it's gone on for a long time. And in particular, Telstra sells wholesale broadband to its competitors, but Telstra is also a retailer. So there's this conflict between Telstra as a wholesaler, but Telstra also being a retailer. Well, the NBN addresses that problem because the National Broadband Network replaces Telstra as the wholesaler. So the NBN will build this new network, it will replace in particular most of the Telstra copper line network, and then this new company, NBN Co, will sell wholesale broadband services to Telstra, Optus, IINet, the other companies that sell broadband and that we deal with, and will then buy retail broadband from the companies that we've always bought retail broadband from. Now, one thing you might say, well, how does this change things? Well, the difference is, is that the NBN or NBN Co is a wholesaler only. So you don't have this problem that you have currently with Telstra being a wholesaler and also being a retailer. So the National Broadband Network is two things. Firstly, it's an infrastructure building project. And secondly, it's a very major broadband industry restructure, and it's a restructure for the good. Okay, so for us as consumers, what we care about is, well, how much is it going to cost us? What, what's, what's going to happen to our monthly broadband fee? How's that going to change? And the NBN is planned for two types of customers. The first type is people who perhaps only have a fixed line telephone service, or people who perhaps um, use minimal internet, perhaps they just send emails every now and then do a little bit of browsing. So for those people, the NBN will cost per month about the same as it does now, and the project's designed that way. And incidentally, the NBN, because it replaces the Telstra copper line network, which we get our fixed telephone services over at the moment, the NBN will also provide a new fixed line telephone service. 
So you just plug your existing telephone into the NBN box when it comes to your house and your telephone works as before. So for current customers who use either just the telephone or the telephone and a small amount of internet, prices will remain the same. Okay? But the NBN isn't built for that purpose. The NBN is built to provide far more capacity so that can people use, can use services which are much higher speed. Myself, for example, I'll be a customer. And so for those people, the monthly service may cost a little bit more, but it'll provide a lot more. So to give an example from a current plan, which is out now, uh, for $100 a month, you get a plan with 100 megabits per second on the uh, downlink coming into you, 40 megabits per second on the uplink going away from you. In future videos, I'll explain what these terms mean for those who aren't sure, with a monthly download limit of one terabyte or a thousand gigabytes. That's $100 a month, more than some of you may be paying at the moment, but it's a lot more service. Okay, So the NBN is designed for two markets. Firstly, people who use just minimal internet or fixed line services only, and people who want to use a lot more. And the NBN provides the capacity for, the, for those people. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the NBN project. It's provides infrastructure with much, much greater capacity than we have now. So the question is, why do we need this extra capacity? Do we, does this project, does the NBN really need to be built? Do we need the extra capacity? And this will be the topic of the next video. I'll see you then.